welcome to What's the Difference? Stories about lives changed because you made a difference. Brought to you by The Mount Church. Here's your host, Pastor Andrew Segree. Well, hey everyone. Welcome to the third episode of What's the Difference? We created this series because we believe that Jesus is still making a difference in people's lives today. So with each and every episode, you're going to hear from everyday people just like you, just like me, and we're going to ask the question, what's the difference? What's the difference that Jesus is making in your life today? So be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And hey, even give us a thumbs up as well. And so for today, for this third episode of What's the Difference, I'm so glad to welcome Jason and Lakin and Isley to What's the Difference. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thanks so much for having us. You know, guys, I'm so glad to have you on here, and we're going to hear your story in just a little bit. Uh, But I have a confession to make, okay? So every time I hear about what God is doing in your life and through your life, I'm so encouraged by that. But I want you to know that every time... Um, I think about your last name, I lose all confidence. (laughs) I have trouble spelling it, saying it. In fact, I remember when I first came to the Mount and I saw it on a t-shirt, I thought someone had a stroke and they completely misspelled a word. So I thought, first of all, in fact, even right now when I went to introduce you, I wanted to say Jason and Lakin, but I felt like I was going to get it wrong. So if you could tell us, look, how you spell your last name, right. how do you officially say your last name, and then maybe there's any background, okay, where in the world is that name even from, okay, why does it even exist, so yeah. anything like yeah. that. So it's pronounced cheese gel. Cheese gel. Cheese gel, yeah. Cheese gel. Yeah. yeah. It's like cheese hair cheese gel. Like hair yeah, gel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And it's a Polish, yeah, it's Polish name. And it's spelled C I Z D Z L E D I Z D I E Z L. That's still sad. <laughs> so I'm like I'm, too I'm much. Just kidding. That's not okay. how it's spelled. <laughs> yeah, it's all C I Z D Z I E L. You sound Jeez like you Joe. had to think about that for a minute. He did. I did. About the second yeah. Time. And you, and here I am trying to homeschool our two boys <laughs> with that last name too. Like it follows no patterns in the Amer- American English language. Yeah, if they it's have to do impossible. a Scantron one day, they're gonna have trouble <laughs> filling in all those Seriously, bubbles on I there. Seriously, I know. So, yeah. Poor that's kids. good. Yeah. Well, that's that's very helpful. <laughs> and maybe, maybe I could say it one day, cheese gel. Yes. Gel. Yeah. Cheese yeah. gel. Yep. Yes. Cheese gel. At least that's what he tells me. Okay. That's what he's told everybody. All right, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now that we now we understand that a little bit more, again, we're gonna get into your story, but just for people who um a lot of people go to the mount who watch this are familiar with your story. You know, but we have lots of new listeners as well, or people watching this who are unfamiliar with your story. So I thought it'd be good for you guys to tell us a little about who you are, where you're from, Mm -hmm. um, and then even just uh, refresh that, but also just introduce yourselves to our audience. So Lakin, we'll start with you. How about you just tell us a little about where you're from, um, maybe any background you want to give, and then maybe take us in your story up to the point where you met Jason. Okay, okay? yeah, and we can do that. Yeah, so I'm Lakin, and I was born in South Korea. Um, I was adopted when I was four months old. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. Adoption is very close to my heart. Um, and so I, I came to America July 21st. Um, and <laughs> yeah, wow, 31 years ago. That's crazy. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so I grew up, uh, me, my mom, and my dad, I'm an only child and grew up in so Stafford. You're the favorite. I, I am the favorite. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Favorite spoiled. Yes. I'm I am the very typical only child. I have that. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> um so yeah, so grew up, my parents are believers and so just all my earliest memories we were at church, involved in church in some way, shape or form. And became a believer when I was young. Yeah. Realized that yeah, Jesus was the answer that if I wanted to if I wanted to learn more to be like him, I had to learn the Bible. And so just, yeah, so I kind of just had that foundation early on of God's word is important and um, you need to know it and yeah. live it out. Yeah. And so I started coming to Mount Ararat when I was in middle school. Mm-hmm. And then I met, I so yeah, I feel like I met Jason in middle school. Okay. So here's the thing, we met, but we were both in two different groups of friends. So like, I always knew who he was. He also played the drums for the worship band uh-huh. and the youth group. And so I knew who he was. And I feel like you knew who I was, mm-hmm. but we just, we, we didn't start dating until college, yeah. which was a good, what, like five, six years later. Mm-hmm. So that's how we, that's, I, I don't even remember the first time that I met Jason. Okay, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, middle school, that's a long time ago. Right. So, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, well, what about you, Jason? You know, tell us about, you know, your background, where you're from, and then take us up to where you met Lakin, and maybe you can clarify, since she doesn't remember meeting you, <laughs> I don't know if you remember meeting her or not, but. Yeah, we, uh, I, I grew up Buffalo, New York, um, from a Catholic family, I came to Mount Ararat when I was about second grade, mm-hmm. um, started, started. Wait, coming. so what, why, why from Buffalo to Stafford? Yeah, my dad is a PG a professional he manages golf courses okay. and so he found uh he started he got a job here in virginia so family moved down there uh when i was in second grade mm-hmm. uh soon after that my mom became a believer here at mount ararat and so then we started coming here as a family i started playing drums in the in the youth worship band pretty early yeah. um, i was discipled by some some solid believers then and then yeah, yeah. Our, I think our moms were actually friends before we were. So that's, I think that's how we. So it's kind of an arranged marriage. Yes, yes, definitely <laughs> more like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and she, we did. We took an, a short-term mission trip together. What one was that? Oh yeah, senior year of high school. Senior year of high school, and that was the first time we really spent time together. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, love blooms on short-term mission trips when <laughs> kids and teenagers are involved. Uh, so she, we we spent time together in India actually. And then she came home and dumped her boyfriend, uh-huh. and then we started okay. talking and dating uh, not too long after that. That's there true. you go. Okay, so what year was it where you guys started dating? What year was that? Yeah. And how old were you? Uh, we started dating in 2008. Okay. And so we were 19. Yeah. When we started dating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Her first year of college, she decided she didn't want to. She wanted to date Jesus. Uh huh. So I had to wait a year while she and Jesus yeah. dated, and then I've heard that we, before. Yeah. Listen, we got dumped. listen. We went to Liberty, <laughs> and there's uh-huh. a every like that's what everybody's doing when they first get to Liberty. Oh, yeah. You're trying. You're yeah. And I just didn't want to do that. Uh-huh. So I said, I'm not going to date this first year. That's right. They're trying to get that MRS degree. When they first <laughs> oh, there, so. Right. So that's misses for you guys who didn't get that. <laughs> That's good, yeah. All right, so you uh, started dating around that time after yeah. this missions trip, and then Jason right. gets dumped while Lakin J- dates Jesus for a little bit. But then, okay, so how long did you how long did you guys um, date for before you decide to get engaged and get oh, married? Oh yeah. So I do want to clarify. I never Jason was never dumped. Okay. No, we, no. we weren't okay. technically dating. We should have been. We, okay, right. Okay. We just weren't. Um, it's okay. So. <laughs> We understand. So it's we, like the, the slow dance, and then Jesus yeah. stepped in, took that dance right. for a year, yeah. and uh, then right. gave it back. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. So um, I, we started dating that sophomore year of college then, and we got married two years after. Yeah. We were engaged a year after we started dating, and then we were engaged for a long time, yeah. so about 10 months. And so yeah. we got married in 2010. Yeah, and did mm-hmm. you get married right here in Stafford? We did, yes, cool. right above this little right room. Right up in the chapel, yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yep. Very good. So you guys get married, mm-hmm. um, and then, you know, most people want to have the American dream at that point. They want to have, you know, a three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bathroom house, their 2.5 kids, and a decent job. Mm-hmm. But you guys um, decide that's not what we want to do. And, you know, this calling comes on your life. How did that come about that you want to become missionaries and even go to the ends of the earth, literally, mm-hmm. um, to fulfill this calling? Like, how did that first desire to become missionaries come about in your lives? Yeah. Yeah, for me, it was that, that first trip to India that we went on. And I, it's hard It's hard to call it, like, a standard calling. There was no, like, supernatural voice. or And it was, I can pinpoint the moment, though, that... I remember feeling like God was stirring something in my heart. We were on a on a bus in India. Our plans had fallen through. Something went wrong. Yeah. And this missionary couple that was hosting us, they were kind of in like the front of the bus, and they got into this argument. Yeah. Because plans had changed and it was stressful. And so we, I remember all of us sitting in the back of the bus, kind of like kids when your parents are fighting, like, uh oh, the missionaries yep. are fighting. Uh huh. But it was that moment that God used in my heart to kind of show me, like, see, they're normal, they're ordinary yeah. people, mm-hmm. and it doesn't take, like, any kind of supernatural, superhuman, like, God just wants somebody ordinary. They're a couple that fights, and so if God can use them as missionaries, maybe he could use me too. Yeah, so I, that, I remember feeling in that moment, oh, it's like, maybe maybe God would use me overseas. That was the moment for me. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my moment was kind of similar. It was also in India, so it was on 
my second trip to India mm -hmm. to visit the same missionaries that we had gone to the first trip to India. Mm -hmm. And we had gone, uh, it was me and three other girls, and we had gone just to help the missionaries. And what we were doing is we were helping them host their teams that came in. Yeah. So we were there for three and a half weeks, just helping to cook and clean and show people around, that kind of thing. And it was living with the missionaries that I just saw, again, kind of like what Jason was saying, they're just regular, ordinary people. Yeah who love the Lord and who want to make a difference with the gifts that they have, that the Lord has given them. And they were doing that well in India. Yeah. And so it was just really neat to see how God could use that to uh, further his kingdom. And yeah. yeah. And so for me, it was just that little seed of, wow, maybe I could do this too. Yeah. Like they're, yeah. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. I think there's something, because a lot of times people would think, oh no, it could never be me, but. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, God, God calls and he equips. Mm -hmm. And really, I mean, if you look throughout scripture, it's just everyday regular people right. that he puts a calling on their lives. And it's up to us to take a step out in faith to see right. if, okay, are we going to really trust God no matter what's going on and step into what he has mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys get this calling. You're, mm -hmm. you've, gone, you've gone on these shorter term mission trips. Um, and then now you get this calling on your life. You see, okay, God can use anybody, <laughs> including right. you, right. Um, to go into, in essence, take the gospel anywhere. Mm -hmm. So why Papua New Guinea, mm -hmm. PNG? Mm -hmm. Why that place? Um, you know, why did that come on the radar? And why did you decide, okay, that's the place that we want to go fulfill this calling, this desire that God's put on our lives? Yeah. Yeah, and we were we went to Liberty University and we were in our missions classes and the first time we had heard about Papua New Guinea or the need there was uh, one of these guest speakers. He was a representative of Ethnos 360, our mission, and he just told this story. And again, this it was one of those moments where it was like God using someone seemingly perfectly ordinary yeah. and doing something incredible because we'd heard from a ton of missionary representatives and talking all about the different kinds of work they do and they seem to have a particular look about them they look like like buff marines and all their kids were sure. perfectly behaved and uh -huh. sitting in the front row yeah, not much crying like myself, right? buff yeah <laughs> kids didn't cry during interviews uh -huh. yeah. Not, nothing like that yeah no yeah. but uh but then this this uh, new guy came in and he shared his story about how and and again the guy was like balding he spent too much time in the sun like he just didn't look the part he was older than all the other guys yeah. and we all of us in the class remember looking up and going like whose grandfather is this and what's he gonna say but the story he told we had never heard anything like it he and his family moved into the jungle they learned a language that had never been learned before in a tribe in Papua New Guinea they had taught this tribe to read and write in their own language developed an alphabet, taught them how to read and write it, then taught and translated through the entire scriptures multiple times until they were believers, developed, discipled these believers until they could pass over leadership of their church to these tribal believers. So now they were back home in the States and they had this maturing church in a jungle tribe where there had never been any gospel yeah. witness before and, this, and their church was sending out tribal missionaries to other tribes. We'd never heard a story like that. Yeah. So that was, that was what kind of intrigued us is, wow, there are these tribes out there, a ton of them in Papua New Guinea specifically, yeah. and maybe we, could be, maybe we could do something like that. Yeah, absolutely. That's good. That's good. Same thing for you, Lakin, as well. Yeah, it was because we were kind of dating, kind of not dating in that class at Liberty. Like, we had talked about everything. And yes. so we, that's all we had heard about mission from that guy from Papua New Guinea. And, yeah, it was like, okay, that's a good direction to kind of head in. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. That's so good. And so you guys have this guest speaker come. And again, you uh, feel like God's speaking to you and thinking that you can go and do this. Right. And so you head to Papua New Guinea. And so then what, what becomes the... Um, I guess like the the vision, the goal for for why for for there, like what what's what's your heart's desire for going there and serving there? Mm -hmm. Just like in the story we heard, it's or our hope, our goal, or desire is to see a mature church planted in a tribe that the gospel hasn't been heard in before. Mm -hmm. A new location. We want to see a new community of believers grow up, mature, be discipled, disciple one another. To follow Jesus in, a, in an unreached tribal location. So I would say yeah. our vision statement mm -hmm. is that we desire to see a mature church planted. Yeah, in Wabashu. Yeah. Oh, that's baby good. girl, we are so sad. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I know. Is it this guy? I'm sorry. I know. I'm 
sorry. I'm trying not to make eye contact. With you. <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. It's all good. Um, well, let, let me ask you guys this, okay? Let me ask you. Um, so you've been there now for how long in Papua New Guinea? Oh, we moved there in 2015. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so 2015. Five years. So five years. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you've been there and you've been serving with, with one particular tribe, the Wabaku, is that yes, right? that's mm-hmm. right. So what does, I mean, what does a day look like for you guys mm-hmm. um, when you're there and when you're serving this tribe? You want me to take that one? Uh, wake up early, do our devotions, listen to the jungle and the birds singing and do all that. Uh, hopefully before the boys wake up. And then... Uh, it's studying flashcards. We're, we're in the, still in the language learning process, yeah. and so <laughs> just yeah. keep rolling should through. We, uh, should we keep going, guys? Should we? Uh, should we just? <laughs> we'll take a break. I am so. All right, everyone. Sorry for that brief interruption. Um, Isley had a moment. <laughs> Apparently, she didn't want to be on television, so she is now. Just walking around the building or something. We don't know what happened. To <laughs> we don't know what she's at. Yeah, it's all good. She's, she's safe. She's good. She's a third child. She's fine. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's like that, huh? Um, so we were saying, um, as we were saying, just asking you guys, okay, so you go to you go to Papua New Guinea, literally on the other side of the world. Uh, you hear this missionary speak and you know, God moves in your heart and you go there. And so what does... Um, you know, what does, what does a day look like for you as you're working with the Wabaku tribe? Mm-hmm. What does a day look like for you um, while you're serving there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're in the language learning process. So a typical day, wake up early, uh, do some devotions. I have my office is like a hammock, and you can hear the jungle. and the bir- We have a parrot that will sit on my shoulder while I'm reading. It's and also typical, poops right? on his yeah. shoulder. But that's disgusting. But a, Thank but. you. <laughs> that's what I say. <laughs> yeah, it's not so bad. So after that, I'm doing flashcards, uh, trying to remember the things, like the little bits of language we're learning. Boys will wake up, we'll do breakfast, and then mm-hmm. she'll jump into homeschool with mm-hmm. the boys. When they start that, I'll uh, get out in the village and see what's happening that day. Who's going on a pig hunt? Who's going fishing? Yeah. Who's doing what? And if I can jump on one of those trips, I'll do that to try to see and experience the culture, uh, the whatever's happening in their day. About lunchtime, we'll come back. We'll have lunch. Um, boys will go down for a nap. Actually, about ne- about noon, the whole village takes a nap because it's so hot that yeah. you can't do anything in the heat of the right. day. So sometimes I'll try to do flashcards. Usually that. Why doesn't everyone just turn on the air conditioning? <laughs> right. We should ask them to. <laughs> Maybe they haven't thought of that. <laughs> So, yeah, I'll do flashcards or take a nap ourselves, and then uh, mid-afternoon, the tribe wakes up. We'll uh, mm-hmm. go back out, sit, and maybe have a, have a meal or dinner with one of, the, mm-hmm. one of our friends or families out in the village. Um, after that, what's that? We do dinner together. Mm-hmm. Um, usually take the boys out in the afternoon to run around, play right. with their friends. Uh, after dinner, we go out again in the village as a whole family this time, but we try not to do language. We try to just uh, spend time with people, spend time with the boys. We'll go to the river and swim. and yeah. Or we'll like play a little soccer game. Our boys love soccer, and that's always fun because all the kids, all the village kids come to play with them. So mm-hmm. it's a lot of fun to have those little soccer games. Yeah, then we'll put the boys down. Sometimes Lake and I will go out and tell stories at night. Mm-hmm. Our, in our tribe's culture, you tell stories late into the night. and. Yeah. You don't need a baby monitor because the village is small and you can hear the kids crying from anywhere in the sure, village, yeah. which is nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's really cool, guys. And, yeah. you know, your, so your, your goal, you know, you've been there five years, so your right. goal is to learn the language. Right. Um, really dive into the culture. Mm-hmm. And then you want to you wanna officially plant a church there. Right. Um, do you feel like the people are receptive to that like um have you gotten any pushback since the like the time that you've been there have you or you feel like people are you know are you growing closer to the people Mm -hmm. um have you faced any tension like what is it what is it what has it been like the five years that you've been there yeah um you want to start this one sure early on there was a little hesitation our tribe has had missionaries in there in the past and none of them they've all quit for various reasons Mm -hmm. So our tribe had a little bit of this, oh, there's a lot of promises made and then nothing ever happens. So they were a little hesitant at front to, to befriend us, to teach us their language because it's a lot of work for them and it's amounted to nothing. So it took us some time to break through those barriers, but now I would say we have really strong friendships with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, I mean, we're not finished learning the language yet, but I think 
every time we go on a break and come back, it kind of strengthens that, hey, maybe these guys are going to stick yeah. around. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that, that was that was challenging early on. Also, we just we have great memories. We I'm kind of known as a jokester in yeah, in the village. Is. Yeah. Like uh -huh. just simple things. You bring like a rubber snake and you hide it under their cooking pots and they love it and <laughs> scare each other what the, for weeks and weeks. It's just but making good memories like that has gone a long way yeah. to break some of those barriers of hesitation to befriend us. Yeah. And I mean even just like our day-to-day -day life, uh we just like the boys and I, when we're done with school, we'll go down to the river, help someone wash their pots. We'll just like, just doing life with them. Mm -hmm. And that is how I think we've broken that barrier. Cause at first they were very hesitant mm -hmm. and not very welcoming towards us. But now, yeah, they're, I mean, they're friends now. And it's just doing that day to day life with them mm -hmm. and showing them that we care and that we're here and that we have something really, really important to tell them. Yeah. We just can't tell them yet because we don't know their language and their culture well enough. And we don't want the message that we have to bring to them to fall on deaf ears. Yeah. So we have to know both language and culture, they go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And we have to have both of those and we have to have a good foundation on both of those before we can, we, before we can present the gospel. Yeah, and there's something beautiful about that too, you guys you know, committing this time because, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, especially I think in American culture, you want things to be instant, mm -hmm. you know, microwave. What's that thing now? It's not a crock pot. It's an oh, Instapot, right? Pot, right? <laughs> I mean, we've gone from just in the, maybe a decade or so, waiting two to three hours for that Sunday afternoon roast to cook to now like, hey, we want it in 15 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for you guys to be investing your time there really building relationships, really learning the language and the culture so that you could build this opportunity to present the gospel. There's something so beautiful about that. And I wanted to ask you guys this too because um, you have three kids, right? right. One yeah. of them that disappeared. You have three kids. <laughs> yes. um, and some people would say that you guys are um, crazy <laughs> for taking your three young kids because they're all under what age? Under six. Under six, mm -hmm. okay. And then how old is Isley? Uh, three months. Three months. So your your two older ones, like they've right. been in this culture. You're getting ready to go back to PNG. Yeah. Taking your you know three some odd month old daughter there. Right. Some people would say you guys are crazy for doing that to leave America and take them to really a place that's, um, I mean, inner there's not internet and then the satellite you get there's no air conditioning right. no indoor plumbing <laughs> um you're far from a hospital or right. a doctor maybe a witch doctor but you're far from like medical care mm -hmm. so two questions are you crazy for doing that <laughs> and then the second question is what are you hoping that your kids will see mm -hmm. what are you hoping to teach them and that god will actually produce in them while you guys are on the mission field yeah yeah you can take that one. are we crazy <laughs> You tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I don't know. Maybe um, our kids. There's so many things yeah. um, that we desire for them. I think one of the biggest ones is that for them, they are growing up in a culture that is completely different from the one that Jason and I experienced, mm -hmm. and even their home culture. Like we would call them Americans, mm -hmm. and so one of our uh, deepest prayers for them is that they learn from an early age that the American culture isn't the only or even the right way to do things. Yeah. That there are so many ways to do things and that God has made people uniquely and individually different and that is okay. Yeah. And that we need to look at those differences and we love them because God made them. Mm -hmm. And they're important and valuable because God made them. And so we just we really desire our boys to understand that, that it's okay to be different and yeah. to be different from other people. You just have to find the connecting thing for right now, like for them. It's, it's, they don't know much of the, our boys don't know much of the language and they're kids, so it doesn't really matter. But they play soccer, they play in the river. They, the uh, village kids teach our boys how to shoot their bow and arrows. And so it's just those little things that they have in common now that they love to do together. And they build those friendships off of that. And we love that for our boys, that they're experiencing just a different way of life. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we also love that they understand their role in our ministry. They're not yeah. extra baggage. They're not just along for the yeah. ride. Right. When when uh, we're walking through the village, maybe to the river in an afternoon, when there's something, we'll kind of as like a, almost like a show, but we'll say, Thatcher, Copeland, stop. Mm -hmm. And they'll stop right where they are. We've trained them to listen and make mm -hmm. sure they do this. Yeah. So when they stop, all the other moms' heads turn and go, wait, our kids don't 
don't do that. We can't get them to stop like that. Well, my so, kids don't do that. You guys, <laughs> can you guys come on over after this is done and teach my kids that? <laughs> no, but like just biblical parenting yeah. mm-hmm. in a con- in the middle of a context where there is no concept of discipline or parenting at all. Right. It is a stark contrast. And our boys understand that we're here to share Jesus with these people who don't know Jesus. Yeah. And when they listen to mom and dad, it makes all the other families want to know what are, what message are they going to bring here because maybe that has something to do with why their kids are listening and ours don't. Yeah. It creates interest. So our boys aren't just in, in different or diff something other than our ministry. They right. create interest for the gospel yeah. right. by listening to mom and dad That's because true. they know this yeah. gospel we're going to share, this message, God's talk that we're going to share with them affects all areas of this life. So That's when we, we talk about that message we're going to share, it has to do with the way your family works, mm-hmm. the way your marriage works, all these things. It's going to affect all of that. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's so good, guys. Mm-hmm. Um, just a couple more questions, okay, for you. Um, this, uh, this next one, I just wanted to ask you, um, you know, you're living in PNG, like you've been there for five years now. And I just, um, I wanted to ask, and this actually is something that, that my wife wanted to ask, why the dreads? <laughs> why do you, what, what, what happened? Why did, did you just not comb your hair for a long time? And like, why, why, why? Uh, when I was a kid, it, the short answer is when I was a kid, I liked the band P.O.D. So okay, yeah. White guy, <laughs> Throwback. White, white guy with dreads. I thought, he looks awesome. I want to do that. Um, but more recently, I like that it's the dreadlocks have become a symbol to me of the longevity and the endurance it takes to do what we're doing. Yeah. Well, my last haircut is when we first started training mm. to prepare to mm. do what we're going to do. That's just, like, it, it's like, it's like to my thighs now. Yeah. We still haven't actually shared the gospel yet. Mm-hmm. So I love the idea of standing up there, sharing the gospel, and seeing how long, that's how long it took to position ourselves, yeah. to have the relationships, the language, to understand the culture, to even get to announce the gospel in an unreached people group, mm-hmm. including the training. That's that's how long the process. So to me, it's a symbol of endurance. Not a lot of people have it because it's they're a pain. They're right. really annoying. It, it takes a yeah. lot of work. Like contrary to popular belief, like it, <laughs> I mean, I can find it does just happen. Like if uh-huh. you just don't brush your hair for you, but like he like he's worked really hard to get like to get that. Like it takes a really long time to the upkeep and yeah. Yeah, yeah Lakin, so are you next? So that? I did have them uh-huh. and I chopped them off because they were just way too hot. Gotcha. They're heavy. They're not they're, practical. They're not at all. <laughs> but they yeah. are a reminder of the goodness of God, right? So sure. what he's doing yeah. in you and through you. And then um, I did want to ask you guys. You know, you've with, with all that God has done in you during that time, I did want to ask you, maybe what's something that you could, you could look back, I know it's probably so many things, but what is something that you can look back and say, man, I'm, I'm so glad that we went. Mm-hmm. And I saw, I saw Jesus make a difference, like in us or mm-hmm. through us in that moment. So what's something you can point back and say, mm-hmm. and only God could have done that mm-hmm. while you've been there? Yeah. I would say for me, it's been, we mentioned the barriers that have broken down, the relational barriers, uh, people that didn't want to trust another outsider, yeah, a, like a small people group, not used to outsiders, letting us into their lives. That, we have a lot of stories of the way the Lord mm-hmm. has opened doors for us, for people to trust us. Even those that stiff-armed us, held us at a distance, we've seen the Lord intervene in really cool ways. Um, in order for those relationships to develop. And we look back and go, there's no way that would have happened on its own. But also a second thing, not even like in the tribe, but even in our journey to to raise support and to get over there and do the training, um, the thing I look back on and I'm most excited about is that uh, Hudson and Gabby Center, we, we lived with uh, the centers for like a summer. We were sharing with Hudson about what we're doing, and the Lord used that to kind of inspire mm-hmm. their family, and now their little boy, Will, yeah. they're headed over to PNG soon, mm-hmm. and they're going to plant a church. They're going to give their lives to take the gospel to an unreached place. And to me, that just, it feels real because we're going over there to disciple, to disciple these people. Wabaku people, but we're, like it shows that we're not we're not going to wait. Like discipleship is what we do, even when we're here on breaks, whatever we do. And so I love seeing that the Lord has developed them and used us to be a part of their story, mm-hmm. so that it's not just maybe they'll go to an entirely new tribe and then yeah. the gospel will get there because of what the Lord did in that. Mm-hmm. I love that too. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. What about you, Lake? I mean, even if it's just something what God has done in you or yeah. through you, like during that time. Right. I think so. One of the biggest lessons I think that I've learned since being overseas um, really is just about. Uh, I feel like He's just revealed so much of 
my sin. So, so we grow up, we have all these presuppositions and all of these things that we think are true and we think are right. But when we align it with the word of God, we start to realize, oh man, maybe some of that isn't. Like yeah. maybe all those thoughts that I had weren't true and aren't real and because they aren't what's written in the in the word. And so I think for me, it's realizing and understanding more about myself and the things that I've held on to or in the things that I've thought were true yeah. that aren't necessarily true and and that they're um, that I just never lined it up lined it up with the scriptures mm-hmm. before. And one of those biggest things um, I think is just learning about my preferences. Mm-hmm. So we go over to PNG and we do training and we've we, we've we've yeah we've given our lives for this we've trained for six years to do this we're finally over there and we get there and we realize that there are different places you can go in papua new guinea you can go to the mountains which the highlands uh you have fresh fruit it's the cooler weather not malaria because there are no mosquitoes Mm -hmm. and then there's like the swamp region where there's malaria because there are so many mosquitoes and it's hot and sticky and you can't grow things. And so, of course, I'm saying, we're going up there, babe. We're going to the mountains. And I'm putting my foot down and I'm drawing a line (laughs) in the sand saying, I'm not going to the swamps. And just then the Lord working in my heart and in my life to tell me that, man, those things are just preferences Mm -hmm. that I have. And am I willing to give those up? Mm for the gospel. Yeah. And so we did, we ended up going to a really hot tribe uh-huh. in the swamps. They call it, our, they, they nicknamed it the armpit of the Sepik okay. because it just, it, it really is kind of a terrible place because it's so hot yeah. and, um, and not a lot of places are as hot as our village is. Yeah. But it's home and the Lord has also, I'm so thankful like he has made that home for our family. I thought I would never be able to call it home, but it is. Mm-hmm. and that's where that's what our boys know as home and we do we are anxious to get back yeah Mm -hmm. that's good yeah speaking of that you know if somebody wanted to connect with you guys or support you guys where would you direct them to to find out more information or even to 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 give you support or anything like that Mm -hmm. yeah we have a website Mm reachwabaku.com and uh the first thing we love is connection communication there's a place to sign up for our newsletter right we send one out like once every month or so um just so people can pray for us uh keep up on what's going on news and things like that uh, also our website has a place where you can give uh, part of when we come home we try to uh try to regain some supporters that we may have lost when we we're overseas sometimes when you're gone you're out of sight out of mind sure. and that like our financial support can drop so there's a way to do that on our website too Mm -hmm. um but yeah we just we love communication we love staying in touch on on the dark sad lonely days in wabaku uh sometimes just a like a little encouraging message Mm -hmm. goes a long way and uh, uh, we have satellite internet because the church bought it for us and we love it i was telling someone earlier sometimes on really bad days i'll just kind of scroll through like on my messenger and call the first person that I like recognize just to yeah. talk to somebody in English. So mm-hmm. we love that connection. Yeah. 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 That's good. So reach Wabaku.com. Yes. yes. People can find out more information about yeah. you guys. Hey, well, thank you guys, you know, for taking time today, like to share your story. Um, and like I said earlier, besides your last name, you guys are a great encouragement to me. <laughs> and I know you've been a great encouragement to so many people. And I think you're such a powerful example about what it means to say yes to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think so many times people actually even miss that. Um, And we we try to live only comfortable lives. And if we're willing to step out on faith, look what God can do. Mm -hmm. Look who who he can reach. And literally, he can use anybody. Mm -hmm. He can make a difference through anybody, um, including you, okay? So thank you, guys. You are a great encouragement, and I'm grateful for you guys as well. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to say thank you guys as well for watching episode three of What's the Difference? Hey, again, remember to hit that subscribe button. Next time, we're going to have Pastor Chris Davenport of the Bridge Church. Um, Chris is planning a church in this area, and we're so excited to hear what God's been doing in and through his ministry. And you will not want to miss that episode. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Even give us a thumbs up for What's the Difference? Thank you for tuning in to What's the Difference? Click on subscribe to make sure you get the next episode with Pastor Andrew. Connect with us for more resources and information on how you can make a difference at mtarart.org. See you at the mound.